Do you think the adults that banned these books have read these books? Absolutely not. Oh, nope. Definitely not. Absolutely not. Because I don't think a moral compass could let you ban books that Correct. say equality and loving each other. These teenagers in York, Pennsylvania are standing up to the latest example of controversy surrounding history and race that is affecting a growing number of America's public schools. The school board cannot just silence our voices. Last fall, the all-white school board of the Central York School District unanimously banned a list of educational resources. And that resource list, which has a lot of bad ideas and some books that I would definitely not want in our district. And I do not feel it's balanced, and I think it's divisive. That list includes a children's book about Rosa Parks, Lala Yousafzai's autobiography, CNN's Sesame Street Town Hall on racism. Racism? What's that? And much, much more. This is hidden figures. I don't, uh, the movie was, you know, a... Uh, uh, like from the movie? Yeah. yeah. This is the, the kid's movie. version of the book from the movie. Yeah. yeah. It's frustrating for the students. This is a board that, after hearing their students' concerns about diversity in the district, hearing my struggles with race, being an Indian American, and, and co consistently feeling like I didn't belong, after all those conversations for weeks on end, they still pursued this book, book ban. I want to learn genuine history. I don't want to learn a whitewashed version. I want to hear all of it. I don't want to I don't want everyone to be worried about how we feel because no one was worried about how BIPOC um, members of the community felt. The ban caused school librarians to pull books from shelves and is creating real fear among educators. I have to now with this resource ban think twice about whether or not I should or could use a James Baldwin quote as an opening for my class. There are teachers looking over their shoulders, wondering if someone's going to be at their door, darkening their door, that you said something or you mentioned something or you used something that you were not supposed to. The fact that all the banned materials are by or about people of color is just a coincidence, according to the school board president. Concerns were based on the content of the resources, not the author or topic, she said in a statement. She and the rest of the school board refused to speak on camera. She says it's not a ban. The materials are frozen while the board vets them. But the process is still ongoing after nearly a year. That suits some parents in this 82% white district just fine. I don't want my daughter growing up feeling guilty because she's white. That sentiment is spreading. At least 27 states have passed or are considering policies strictly defining what students are allowed to learn about race. One expert says the York ban is something new. Yeah, this seems pretty egregious. I mean, I can see how certain um, trainings or workshops that some parents take exception to seem really outside of what a history class can be expected to do. But the kind of texts that are being banned here make me feel that there is now just sort of an allergy to anything that mentions race or racism. This is about more than a book or a movie or even a curriculum, some veteran teachers say. In York, they worry it's a war on their profession. I am not an enemy of the state. That's right. I am here to take care of your babies when they walk into That's my right. classroom. And there are some I'm looking up at, but they're still babies. Boy, oh boy, Evan McMorris Santoro joins me now. I mean, it, it's, this is ridiculous. It's outrageous. Thank you for that piece. It's really great reporting. This seems really broad. What was the issue with CNN's Sesame Street Town Hall on race? Well, Don, that's the question those students in the piece were asking, parents are asking, teachers are asking, and I asked several times while I was in York. Uh, but the board will re refuse to talk about the specific things that they don't like with things like Elmo asking about race or a Rosa Parks biography or the 2017 Academy Award winning best documentary feature. Uh, people who are watching this, watch this issue nationally, say this York situation could present a new front in this battle in which anything that centers non-white people, their experiences, their lives, their history, could be suspect. And they say that's a very, very scary thing to think about. Don? Yeah, let's remember, as they say, there's no systemic racism. That was sarcasm, Evan, by the way. Thank you, sir. I appreciate the reporting. <laughs>
So we've been talking about the hysteria over what students might be learning about race in school having real consequences. A school board in Pennsylvania banning dozens of books and media that talk about race in America. So join me now to discuss CNN political commentators Ashley Allison and Scott Jennings. Good evening to you. Scott, we love having you on to talk about these issues involving race. Maybe just for your facial expressions, I don't know. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> these are valuable conversations. They I'm are. glad you have these panels. I mean, you're, uh, yeah. you're brave enough to have them, and I think, we, I think we ought to have them. Thank you very much. Good, I, and I agree with you. Well, Ashley, I want to ask you about schools again becoming the, the ideological battlegrounds, uh, whether it's over masks or boogeymen of critical race theory. How much of this is really about the parents instead of the, the kids caught in the middle right here? Well, you know, I was reflecting on this segment, and one of the people said, they're teaching really bad things like slavery and discrimination. Yes, there are terrible things that we should not have done, and yet we need to teach our kids about the history, because if you do not know your history, you are destined to repeat it. But unfortunately, we now see parents or adults who are preventing having the full truth being taught. I used to be a school teacher, and I don't actually think it's teachers who don't want to be taught, uh, teach the full truth. It is the administrators that are putting some constraints on them. As a teacher, you have an obligation and a responsibility to teach verbs, nouns, the Revolutionary War, and the Civil War. You cannot pick and choose the facts that you want to teach. You also have an obligation to teach students critical thinking skills. And it is very clear that the students in York and all around the country are saying, I smell BS and I'm not buying it and I want a full, complete story of this country and I will use my critical thinking skills to discern what is good policy and bad policy. And it's the adults that are not leading and we're relying on young people yet again to save us from poor leadership of adults that should not be in the positions they are in. So, Scott, listen, the, you know, we're talking about Sesame Street, uh, Rosa Parks' book. I mean, this isn't controversial stuff. It's enlightening. Uh, the right and the Fox propaganda network love to attack safe spaces and cancel culture. I mean, they're all about pushing back against censorship. Isn't this being, you know, this school board being hypocritical here? Isn't this about censoring and, and canceling books? Well, I, um, I read the the list of materials that was on the banned list, and I, I found a lot of, you know, variants there. I mean, the Sesame Street episode, the biography about Rosa Parks, seems to be far different kind of material than the book White Fragility, uh, which I can't even begin to imagine why that's in a public school. So, so there's some stuff on there that seems perfectly reasonable to have in a school, and some stuff that, you know, I'm, I'm not necessarily a, a fan of being part of a, a school curriculum, nor would I think most parents would be. Uh, if they are concerned about their, their kids being sent into a school and being told because you were born white in America, you're inherently rotten and racist and we're going to fix it. So it strikes me that there is a middle ground here. And the middle ground is, number one, banning materials is not a good idea. I read in the CNN story that we just posted a couple of hours ago that not only were they taken out of the curriculum, but they were pulled off the library shelves. It strikes me that all materials could live in a library and if students wanted to access materials and use them for book reports and things, that should be perfectly fine. It also strikes me that there's a huge difference between, you know, some of the things that were banned and others that were banned that maybe ought to be re-reviewed. So um, I'm, you know, I'm sympathetic to parents who are worried about what their kids are learning. I'm also sympathetic to the students uh, who are rightly have their radar, their antenna up when they hear that things are being taken out of libraries. Having something available in a library doesn't mean it has to be in the curriculum, but it also it means that students can get access to it if they want it. So perhaps there's a way forward here that, that satisfies most people's concerns. Look, look Ashley, I mean, you but know, the, uh, go, go on, go on. These, uh, no teacher is teaching someone just because they are white that they are bad. They are teaching history, and we cannot omit who were perpetrators and, and, and enabled slavery and some of the oppressive policies that we have. It is history. I never said one person was better than another person, but we have to, we cannot run away from the facts. And so it is uh, a, a weak argument to just say, like, because I read something that makes me feel uncomfortable, I'm going to assume that the teacher is saying that my student is bad or that I am bad. No, it's the facts. And if you don't like the facts, then let's 
not ever repeat an oppressive policy like slavery or discrimination or voter suppression or not giving a woman a right to choose. But that's not what, you know, that's not the argument. They just want to ban all of history <laughs> okay. because they're afraid of having tough conversations. Well, look, I have to say, I am a big uh, a fan of James Baldwin. And The Fire Next Time was controversial when it was written, and now it is part of curriculums all across the country, and people laud um, the work. Listen, we'll continue this conversation. Thank you. We're, I got to go.